that it's silver anniversary season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, from the city of Venice on Florida's beautiful west coast, it's a $140,000 Florida BPA Open. Now let's meet today's finalist, a veteran of 27 years on the PBA Tour, and winner of four titles, Tita Samaz from Wanakew, New Jersey. From Kingsport, Tennessee, recipient of the Good Sportsman Award for the last two years, Steve Martin. In third place, looking for his first PBA victory, Chuck Pierce of Dallas, Texas. From Vista, California, appearing in his second televised final, Jim Murtishaw. And with the best television winning percentage record, our tournament leader, Hugh Miller from Mercer Island, Washington. That's our championship field today on the Professional Bowlers Tour. And this is the third consecutive year that we've come back to very comfortable Galaxy Lanes, one of the finest establishments anywhere. In a field of 160, five professionals have emerged. I'm Chris Shankle, and we welcome you to another live telecast on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Our five finalists, what a happy blend of old and new. Our tournament leader is a left-hander, Hugh Miller. So we expect a lot of excitement today. In fact, all afternoon on ABC, as Wide World of Sports will follow with professional figure skating, World Challenge, all the great names there, plus World Cross Country Skiing Championships. That's later today. I mentioned old and new. Well, he's not that old, but he's been our colleague for 13 years, Nelson Burton Jr., and you know he's back competing. He finished 16th this week, so he'll be in the final five soon. But, Bo, you and the field proved that many a good tune has been played on an old violin. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Chris. I had a pretty good week. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we've had a lot of young players in the championship round so far this year. In fact, one of the average field ages earlier this year was 23 years old. This week, it's 37 years old. Why? Well, we've had a little bit of a reduced scoring environment here. The lanes have been a little tougher. The players have to keep the ball in play, and spares are very important. It's a good week for you amateurs to watch and study the pros. Now our tournament leader, Chris, spoke about Hugh Miller. He has the best championship round record on television of all the touring pros. He's only lost twice in his whole career. He should be very tough. And finally, we have one added dimension this week. A lot of people have asked about, how hard should I throw a bowling ball? How much does speed mean in a bowling ball? Well, this... This week, we're going to answer that question for you. Do players throw 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, 50? We have a radar gun here to judge the speed. Hopefully, we'll show you something that will help your game, so stay tuned. Chris, they're ready for action. They sure are. Here in the Florida BPA Open, in conjunction with the Bowlers Journal magazine, 23,000 will go to the winner, and here's a 52-year-old professional, 27 years a member of the PBA, a four-time champion, and what a guy, Tita Semez of Wanakew, New Jersey. Just built a new home there. Uh -huh. And that'll get the adrenaline flowing in this veteran. And up now at 5'6", 185 pounds, very sturdy. Um, Seven-time champion in 11 years. He is an unbelievable competitor. Tough. Kingsport, Tennessee. So, all even after one frame as we replay his shot from a profile angle. Steve Martin, one of the powerful young veterans, as we say on the professional bowlers tour. And look at how his eyes are riveted on that target. A little bit higher than shoulder with a backswing. Snaps that wrist through. Very low with the following extended follow through, just an excellent shot as he starts with a strike. There you see his statistics 11 year PBA member, seven titles, nine 300 games. And now uh, Steve Martin of Kingsport is going to have to um, shoot the 3 6 on the left lane of this championship pair. The championship here, 31 and 32 in its 40-lane establishment, Galaxy Bowling Center, just south of Sarasota. The track area, or the area between the second and third arrows, is where the players must play because it, it is worn a little bit more than the rest of the lane, so you have to keep it in that area. Good job by Steve Martin. It is his 22nd television finals in his 11-year career. And for Tita Semez, his 26th television appearance. 
second in the 1978 Firestone Tournament of Champions behind Earl Anthony. Bo, ne Bo Burton was third, Roth was fourth, and Zappa was fifth that year. He'll take it. He's grown enough in Brooklyn, New York over his long career that he deserves that one. Tita Semez, five-step delivery, very similar to Steve Martin's, but at the age of 52, he doesn't quite get as low at the line as he used to. Watch how it slides through and then kind of raises up at this point, pulling the ball left of his target. You see him raise up. That caused the ball to go left. Tita has to stay down at the line. First senior player to win a PBA national tour event since the great Buzz Fazio in 65, should Tita win today. That's over the age of 50. Mm -hmm. So Tita now will have to shoot a three pin. Let's get a slow motion replay. Tita starts the ball not quite wide enough and not enough speed, and his ball cuts right through the, the center, leaving a very simple spare. If he converts, he'll have a lead of nine pins over Steve Martin. And we'll have some ball speeds for you in just one minute to show you how hard these players are throwing. Spare for Samez. 24-year difference in age between Samez and his opponent, whom we're looking now, Steve Martin, who'll be shooting in the third frame with a spare working. Steve Martin, while he's warming up, was throwing the ball 18 miles an hour. Let's see how he does as you look at his grip that hand cocked under. Let's see how hard he throws it under pressure. Here's a shot. Chris, and he rolled that ball at 17 miles an hour. When a player can go a little bit slower, but not too slow, that means he's very comfortable and relaxed out there. So it was an excellent shot. Steve Nagy Sportsmanship Award. That's awarded to the player, the touring player, a man who bowls more than 50% of the tournaments, is awarded by a vote of his fellow players of being the nicest guy on the pro tour. Once again, you see some paraphernalia on the arm and forearm of Steve Martin to uh, overcome some tendonitis. Okay, and on that paraphernalia, he has something written because his wife Kim couldn't be here. A solid 10. Steve Martin rolls up what is an apparent good shot. The six pin flies around the 10, and here's where we'll see an increase in the, in the ball speed. We remembered 17 miles an hour in his first shot. I'll time this one. I bet you it's upwards of 20. Right at 20 miles an hour as he converts that spare, and he leaves the match over Tita Semez by just nine pins. We'll be back. What's lurking up on those top shelves? Investigate with a two-foot wood step stool from Rich Ladder, just $5. It's built to hold up when you need it and fold up when you don't. And it's just $5 as the February hardware value of the month. Look for the banner at most True Value hardware stores and home centers. Once upon a time, millions of us roamed the bathrooms of America. We're bull shavers, convinced we had to use shavers with all kinds of expensive extras. But we don't pay an arm and a hoof anymore, because us bull shavers are becoming... Bic shavers. Bic gives us an extraordinary shave at an extraordinary price, without bells or whistles. To pay more makes you, well, bullheaded. Try the Bic for normal or sensitive skin, and you too will have a beef. With bull shaving. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car-caring people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. Here's a man whose professional career has spanned at least 27 years, Titus Semez. Leading by nine, coming into this frame, the fifth for him in our very first game. And now he's le left the four, six, seven bow. How do we do it? What he has to do, Chris, is really not go for this split. Throw the ball over here in the four, seven zone. Hope we can bounce one of these pins out and knock it into the sixth. Just a lot of speed, no use trying to slide it across. Oh. 
smart move. So it's an open frame for Titus Semez, whom earlier we asked why he was still bowling. I just try to keep myself in shape, though. I think I got maybe a couple years left till I'm age 55. Plus, I want to keep myself in shape for the expanded senior tour. And the PBA Seniors Tour uh, hopefully will expand to eight or nine tournaments, and some of those hopefully will be televised during the summer months. Tita Semez trails by five, fifth frame. Big follow through, but he has left the one, two, and four on the left lane. Once again, the championship here, 31 and 32. Try to keep the ball between the second and third arrows, the track or Warren area on the lane. All the players have done that successfully so far during the week. Tujas Semez moving to the right will play around the second arrow to try to convert the one, two, four. And did that picture, picture book perfect there you see the 23,000 the winner 12 for second 8 6 and 5,000 to the loser of this our very first match the number four bowler is up Steve J Martin of Kingsport Tennessee seven championships he started after the first round in 96 and then moved to fourth after the sixth round <laughs> He will take it, just as he took to our question what he does when he is not bowling. Here's his answer. Well, on the off-season, I have uh, a job as a marketing rep for some local Burger King franchises in Kingsport and the Tri-City area in Tennessee, and basically just uh, in charge of most of the promotional stuff back there, and it's, it's really uh, loosened me up a little bit, and now I know I have something to fall back on whenever I decide to retire. Okay. And I can tell you, he is a popcorn freak. He loves popcorn. Well, who doesn't, though? You're an expert on that, Chris. Of course. You used to grow it on your farm. Here's Martin. Oh, now he has put together a double, and he has jumped out now to a 15-pin lead after trailing. Steve Martin looks like he's in control. Just rolls the ball very nicely down there on that particular shot, 17 miles an hour. That's about 2.4 tenths of a second. From the time it leaves his hand till it impacts the head pin, he has Tita Semez down by 15 pins. Tita working on a spare six frame. Bouncing right back. The man who won one of his four championships in Florida in 1977. As Perfection will have it. Tita Semez drives all 10 pins right in the pit. You see the ball snapping through and driving all the way over to the left side of the head pin after it knocks out the 1, 3, 5, and 9. Now he trails by 15. His last shot was 19 miles an hour. That's the speed he had in practice. Let's see if he keeps it up here and tries to cut the lead down to 5 pins. With that double, five pins now separating uh, a younger and an older professional here in Florida. We'll be back. You guys were easy last year. Whoa, whoa, come on, admit it. You cheated. Cheated? Us? That guy was a ringer. No. That guy was a monster. Besides, much good for your complexion. <laughs> hey, and don't forget, we let you share our beer. Remember? That draft beer was unbelievable. That it yeah. was. Sure was. Drinking Miller Genuine Draft will remind you of the best beer you ever had. Because it's cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. Lou? Where's money right? <laughs> Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes, and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions, where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card. And everybody's a winner. You could win a free Mastercare tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. Former World and Olympic champion Scott Hamilton, Robin Cousins, and more. The World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. Here in Venice, Florida, capacity crowd, in fact, standing room only, and tickets were going to just to stand for $10. And you're looking at Steve Martin, who uh, sees something on the approach. Looks like it needs a bit of a wipe job by Kurt Schmidt. It's uh, a bug, Chris, I think. Yeah, it is. It's moving. Yay. Son of a gun. <laughs> Kurt Schmidt 
Kurt is not in the... <laughs> Kurt Schmidt, who works for Larry Jelichstein with the PBA, won the former PBA champions who won the tournament in Toledo where we'll be back this year for the national championship. Now here's Steve Martin, leads by five, has two strikes working. And wouldn't you know, he came up high, leaving the 6-10. Well, the action is as we predicted. The players are trying to keep the ball between the second and third arrows. Speed's very important. Accuracy's very important. Martin cuts through the middle, avoids the 6-7-10 split, has a spare to shoot at. He's been using 17 miles an hour on his first ball. Now watch as he accelerates his speed on the second ball. It's very important for everyone, pro and amateurs, to throw harder, cut down the hook, and increase the accuracy on the spares. What was the speed, Bo? Chris, 17 on the first ball. He went up to just above 20 miles an hour on the second ball, and that's about the maximum speed we've ever seen. Mark Roth is up about that speed, and that's a good speed for spares. Remember, a uh, bowling ball weighs 16 pounds, not like a baseball. So you can't quite get the velocity. Well, that is fast. It's rhythm and timing. The grip of Steve Martin, who's had tendonitis problems before and wrist problems. He curls that hand under there and just snaps that wrist through. Always amazed at the ability of these professionals, how they come back. And speaking of coming back, great professionals like Scott Hamilton, like Dorothy Hamill, uh, Robin Cousins, Rosalind Sumners, plus World Cross Country Skiing. That's today, Bo. It should be good. And Rosalind Sumners, who was on our Pro Bowlers Tour Championship uh, for an interview with you, Chris, at the U.S. Open. I saw mm -hmm. her perform after that. Look, she looks sharp. Here's Tita Semez. Double working and big rebagger. So he has a seven pin lead again. Back and forth. Watch this shot again. Excellent move by TD. Tucks that arm swing right in down next to his body between the second and third arrows. Look at his reaction. Bang! He takes the lead. He was trailing by three. Now has a seven pin lead. Comes up in the ninth frame. Three stri strikes working. Could extend that lead to 17 pins. Tough match. In his career, he's won nearly $400,000. Oh, and then this. Four, six, seven. The same shot that Tita had in the fourth frame. He cuts right through the middle and doesn't get the break to avoid the split. Once again, now he must take a chance, throw the ball very hard in the four, seven zone. Hope he can drop, knock out one of the pins out of the pit to knock out the, the six. Tita Semez. So his seven pin lead dwindled to four and now uh, er, to four and now he trails by eight. Good luck at Steve Martin. You see 148 through the seventh strike up. Semez with that open in the ninth, 180. over and leaving the 10. The lanes this week, as we said, it took only an average of 200 to cash in the tournament as of, opposed to about 216 last week when we were over at Don Carty's Kendall Lanes. Tita still has a chance to win the match. The situation is this. Martin with a spare would be going at a 208 pace. Tita Semez with three strikes could have 210. It's going to the final frame. You know, we always talk about high games, and sometimes we forget about low games. These professionals are human also, like Steve Martin's low game this week was 161, and Tita's was 149. So maybe that'll make some of our bowlers at home feel that uh, the, these bowlers are human as well. Very true, Chris. As Steve Martin reaches back, gets some tape in there, and so this is a great lesson right here. In a pressure situation, he leads this match by just eight pins. He has enough cognizance about himself to take his time, make that thumb hole feel absolutely perfect. These are the important shots. If he does not strike twice, Tita Semez can get up and double and win the match. Here's the man that left the seven. His first title was in Sarasota. He's a United States Open champion. Martin puts tremendous spin and wrist action on the ball. Drives the five over, almost hits the seven, but the head pin comes back and clips it away. But this 
for Steve Martin means is he can best he can finish with is 207. Tita Semez will have a chance to win the match when he comes up with two strikes. Steve Martin, and here is Tita Semez, whose first win came 17 years ago. The experience of Tita Semez, he knows that he needs two strikes to win this match, trying to picture the perfect release to get the ball in the pocket and hopefully go on to meet Chuck Pierce. Yeah, sure. All right. 207 for Steve Martin of Kingsport, Tennessee, with six strikes along the way. The prospects for Tita Semez, he must strike on this ball, the next ball, and eight pins to win. Eight or better to win, seven to tie, anything less is a loss, but he must strike right here. Now, he needs one more and eight pins. The pressure is on this veteran. He's accepted it before, believe me. What a super shot. 27 years of experience went into that shot, and you could not walk down the lane and place the ball in the pocket any better. When you see him go to one knee, you know they've thrown it perfectly. Now for Tita Semez, he needs this strike, and eight or better to win. Must strike on this ball. paycheck ever, if you look at Steve Martin, is when he finished second in 1978 to Earl Anthony in the Firestone. 17,000. He's shooting for 23 today. Tita Semez in the clutch. Three pounds, seven ounce pins. He drives them straight back. But he must remember that the match is not over yet. Many a match this week has been lost on the last ball. He needs eight or better to win. Seven, we'd have a sudden death playoff. Two frames. The winner. All right. Peter Samez winning the game by 1-10. Samez will go against non-winner Chuck Pierce, a 42-year-old and a 52-year-old. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Chrysler Motors and its automotive divisions, working together to be the best. By Seagram's Wine Coolers, everyone a champion. And by True Value Hardware Stores, True Value more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. The Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after this message and a word from our local stations. Ollie, if you don't hurry, I'll miss my play. Well, I'm doing the best I can in this terrible rain. Would a new set of Anco wiper blades help? Certainly, put them on. Change to Anco, the best-selling brand of wiper blades and refills. Man, now I can see an airplane. Airplane! Oh, oh. Don't worry, Ollie. It wasn't mine. That's mine. Oh. Anco, the best blades you can buy. Test proof. Oh, fellas. Look here, fellas. Let's do one for Mr. Seagram. Now, look here, Mr. Seagram. You sound like my kind of guy, yay. You make that? Seagram's golden wine cooler. And you make it wet and dry. Oh, now, Mr. Seagram. You're my kind of guy. Huh? My, my kind, kind of guy. guy. Sunday, Haley Mills is trapped. If we can get our parents together, they get married. With some help. My mom's twin sister. It's Deja Vu in Parent Trap Part 2. You're getting warmer and about to discover the greatest vacation idea since the long weekend. South Carolina. Where summer comes early and stays late. South Carolina. And where the rest of the year is one long spring and fall. South Carolina. faces, beautiful places. Seven-year, 70,000-mile warranty. Big selection. Low, low prices. Low interest rates. For big reasons, Lad Hanford is ready to deal. Get 3.7% APR financing or cash rebates on your favorite Chrysler, Plymouth, or Dodge car. 
Or if it's a Reliant or Aries K car you desire, get 3.7% and $600 back. It's time to deal on the best cars, Chrysler. With the best warranty, 770. Where the prices are the best, Lad Hanford. Where the tradition continues. Watch What a Country, Saturdays at 7.30 on WHTM. This week, we flash back to 1984, the St. Louis Open. My colleague Nelson Burton Jr. was seated fourth with some pretty tough competition waiting in the wings. With that strike, Bo clinched the victory against 20-time champion Marshall Holman. Bo's next opponent was five-time champion Pete Couture, who bowled a solid 249, but Bo was not to be denied and bested Couture with an impressive 257. Now, the stage was set at Dick Weber Lanes for a PBA record that still stands today. And Bo's opponent, Dick's son, Pete Weber. With that ball, Nelson Burton Jr. won the St. Louis Open and recorded the highest four-game total pinfall record, 1050, in PBA television history. Okay, that was 1984. Bo's overdue. So is Tita Samez, Anthony Tita Samez, 208 to Steve Martin's 207. Now, Samez going against 42-year-old Chuck Pierce of Dallas, Texas. Ten-year PBA member, the handshake, and game number two. Remember, then will be Jim Murdashoff, uh, and then our tournament leader, left-hander, Hugh Miller of Mercer Island, Washington. Along with Joe Berardi, 86 Senior Touring Pro Doubles Championship, Samez. He was hoping for another strike. He got seven in that 208 victory by one pen over Martin. So we have the 245 to shoot at. Something Tita hasn't done so far today. He has changed balls for this spare. Uh, obviously, he used the same ball the first game for all his spares. Let's see what he does on this shot. Ooh, just did. Next week, we move to Peoria, Illinois. True value open at the Landmark Recreation Center. Walter Ray Williams is a defending champ. He finished 13th here. Now, Chuck Pierce, 42, 510, 175. A 10-pin on the right lane. Chuck Pierce, at 42 years of age, has grooved his swing. He has a four-step delivery as opposed to five steps by the other players down low. Excellent shot to start the match out with. Remember, keep the ball in play. As Palmer Falgren, our statistician, said, that's bowling. That first match was one of the most exciting I've seen so mm -hmm. far this year. These players have to use all their skills. Change angles, change speed, change the amount of hook on the ball. You must be thinking out there. It's a cerebral match. All right, and a good job by Chuck Pierce, who is a big assist out on the tour, Bo. He helps with pro-ams. He does a lot of things for a lot of touring players and for himself, of course. Chuck Pierce, as you alluded to, Chris, uh, helps organize, uh, as you see, his wife, who's here, June. By the way, I'll say hi to my mother. That's her first name, too, June. And my family being somewhat from Texas, my dad. These are Texans out here. Chuck Pierce helps organize some of the programs before the tournament. The normal programs on Tuesday, Chuck helps the sponsors organize programs on Sundays and Mondays so the players can have a lot of action. Second shot. So Chuck Pierce now has left the one, two, four on the left lane. This is only his second television appearance, so there's a lot of pressure. He said the one thing he has must guard against is too quick with his feet, too, which gives him too much ball speed. Obviously in the second frame, he went a little quicker on that shot. His first frame that hit the pocket, he was 17 miles an hour. Tita Semez has been around 19, so we have a little bit different styles, a little bit different ball speed between these two players. Oh, chopping the one-two off the four, and that's disastrous open frame for Pierce. We him 26 through the second, and Semez is up, spare working. This is our second match, if you just joined us. Anthony Titus Samez defeated Steve Martin 208 to 207. Oh, kind of strikes he was throwing the last two plus eight pins to win, Bo. Excellent, Chris. As you see, the averages are much higher this year. Usually the winning average in a professional bowler's tour for the year is around 214. 
obviously a little bit higher. We've seen it in our championship rounds through the first six weeks. And Steve Martin, who was in that first match, is a 215. Pete McCordick, who rolled that from tremendous 300, is also a 215. Now here's Tita Semez, has a 14-pin lead through two frames, can extend to 24. Increasing his lead to 24 pins. No doubt about it, Tita Semez loosened up after he threw that clutch double against Steve Martin in the first game to win by one pins. He has all the motions, Chris, of a man who could go all the way today. This pair is very touchy. Tita is sharp. He's relaxed. Let's see what Pierce can do here. Okay, and Chuck, whose best finish ever was in a television final where he was second. Talking of national tour events now, that was in Lansing, Michigan. What flaws in his style? We ask him that question. Well, my good point certainly is my concentration has been very, very good this week. My uh, liabilities uh, today could be my fast feet. I have an opportunity to, to rush the line. If I do that, I could get in trouble and the ball could go Brooklyn or high on me. So I have to really guard for that today. Good communicator. Right now, he needs to put some pressure on Tita Semez, who looks very sharp. He could cut the lead down to 14 with a strike. And a 10 pin on that left side. Chuck Pierce, who also works in the summer with uh, Frank Ellenberg, teaching juniors in bowling camps around, mm -hmm. the summer, uh, around the country. He said last year he was in the Denver area, so Spends his full time around the spectrum of bowling. He helps the pros out here, actually bowls on the tour, and his off season gives instructions to juniors around the country. Wonderful patience, this 42 year old. Great athlete. The man that was high finisher of all the Texans at Forum Lanes, Quaker State Open. We're going to return, but first, this message. We owe it to you. So we invite GM and Ford to follow Chrysler. You know, for five years, I've been feeling like the guy who sent invitations to a party, and nobody came. Well, somebody finally showed up. GM and Ford decided the time has come to improve their warranties. Chrysler says, welcome to the party. It's good for America. Maybe that's why we haven't heard from the Japanese. Millions of Americans are only getting two or three-year protection. What are they, second-class citizens? We've backed 5 million Chrysler owners with 550 protection. Our quality had to improve, and dramatically. So, the party's over. Chrysler announces the end of 550 and the beginning of 770, the best powertrain protection in the business. Seven years or 70,000 miles on the powertrain, 100,000 miles against outer body rust through on every Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth we build, car, truck, and minivan. Like I said, if you're looking for who builds them best, take a good look at who backs them best. January 31st, Pete McCordick rolled a perfect game and won 100 grand. Now in the finals of the True Value Open, that same Pete's worth $200,000. It's ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday. Running behind our usual pace, thus Tita Semez while way had a strike in the fourth, left to seven pin here in the fifth. And Bo, how he ever left that seven pin, I'll never know, but that happens. An apparent perfect hit. Tita drove the four pin straight back, leaving a solid seven, has given some life to Chuck Pierce. Chuck, as I said, a good all-around athlete. Uh, in high school, he was one of the best quarterbacks in Texas. He went took had a scholarship to L.A. State and actually played against Pete Bethard of USC in front of 100,000 people in the Coliseum. He says one of the exciting moments in his life. And there is a big strike as his wife, June, cheers, along with his many fans here. Chuck trips the four, see the two pin, the third pin on the left-hand side of your screen. What happens? It goes over, hits out the four and the seven. Has given life to Chuck Pierce. Chuck, a pretty good game so far. He started with a ten pin in the first frame, had an error in second frame where he opened, strike in the third, ten pin in the fourth, strike once again in the fifth. Early in the match yet, he needs to put some pressure on a smooth stroking, very confident Tita Semez. Yes. Come on, baby. Get and get some cutting. Semez's lead to 23 pins now as Tita is up and ready to shoot in the sixth with a spare working. 
three pound seven ounce pins and by rules of the American Boeing Congress a pin once it tilts nine degrees off axis must go down that pin was legal it tilted past nine degrees and fell over here's Tita Semez 23 pin lead leaving a four pin on the right lane one of his four victories came in 1968 and the winner's paycheck then was six thousand dollars Today, the winner will get 23000 I wanted to meet Jim Murdishaw and then the tournament leader, Hugh Miller, as we look at Pete McCordick's, the 300 man, 113200 Dal Ballard, 100000 the U.S. Open. They're up there, and Weber finishing second. Some good prize money, and they're grabbing it this year. Dave Ferraro in 10th place. He's a young man to watch for. All right, Tita, 7th frame, 22-pin lead. Now he jumps back to a 32-pin lead, this 52-year-old from Wanakew, New Jersey. We'll be back after this. This can happen to good bowlers on lanes with limited distance dressing or short oil. Short oil means oil out to here, 26 feet or less from the foul line. Short oil can make your ball react unpredictably a big problem. Now, the solution from Ebonite, the new Firebolt SO, a urethane ball with a unique additive to make it roll long, hit hard, and not overreact on today's short oil conditions. Ebonite's new Firebolt SO is the solution to the problems of short oil. A doo da, a doo da. Well, the boy genius. You try and find out why Kentucky Fried Chicken is America's favorite chicken? Then pay attention, son. Folks just love going to the Colonel's because no one else makes chicken with that special blend of 11 herbs and spices. Any of this getting through to you, son? And of course, no one else's chicken is finger licking good because nobody else knows the Colonel's secret formula. The secret formula! Kid's too smart for his own good. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Here at Galaxy Lanes in beautiful Venice, Florida, just south of Sarasota on an overcast day inside, pleasant. 42-year-old Chuck Pierce in our second match against the first game winner, Anthony Tita Samez, 208 to 207 over Steve Martin. And now this man has a double up and a big shot in the seventh frame, trailing by 22. Maybe. Not only maybe. talks to himself, but the pens. And he said maybe. Boy, that was an awfully good shot to just wish maybe on that. That was a solid 10 and a very important hit for him. Watch the second pin on the left, right-hand part of your screen. The six pin just mm. zaps around the 10 pin. People wonder why we leave the solid 10. And the only thing I can say is one round object hits another round object. Uh, and obviously, <laughs> they don't all react exactly the same every time. Pierce will trail by 21. R23 with this spare. And uh, next week to Landmark Recreation Center, Ray Beckard's establishment, a great one, Peoria. And if we can get a 300 game there, true value will double the ante. 200,000. Okay, then on to the Miller Lite Championship in Milwaukee. And on to King Louis, Overland Park, followed by the Miller Lite Open in North Olmsted, a suburb of Cleveland. Four stops coming up. Chuck Pierce with that jamming his fingers in there uses a what we call a semi fingertip grip. He goes in just past the first knuckle, comes up here at eighth frame, trails by 23, still in the match. Very much so. Man is looking for his first professional win on the national tour. Chuck Pierce. Just a beautiful shot as you see the ball rotating. Now watch the ball. It hits the one, three, five, nine. Only four pins hit by the ball, but when you roll it in there perfectly, they do the proper thing and take them all out. Peter Semez, eighth frame. Ooh, a 10 pin on the right. Once again, match play competition. We saw one of the most exciting matches of the year in the first match as Tita Semez defeated Steve Martin. Once again, the match is very tight. Tita Semez going at a 218 pace. Chuck Pierce still a potential 225. It'll be up to the last two frames once again. Tom Chamberlain, a PBA national champion, winning it in Toledo, Ohio, where we'll be later, finished sixth 
and picked up a check for $4,000. The former construction worker, Tita Semez, I think uh, a man obviously who stays in top shape all his life, as you can see by the trim fit muscular body still at the age of 52, leads by 23 pins, ninth frame. Living the two. Smart move by Tita. If you're going to make a mistake at the end of the game, make it to the right. Don't make it to the left. When lane conditions are a little bit on the tough side like this, keep the ball to right. Don't pull the ball through the nose. Don't beat yourself. Easy spare for Tita to maintain a 22-pin lead. And with a shiny bowling ball, he shoots the spares. Tita Semez. Now with a strike up in the eighth, this man can cut Semez's lead to 12 with a strike in the ninth, setting himself very carefully. Good habits on the approach, Bo. He said, take one shot at a time. That's been his philosophy all week long. He needs this strike. Oh, there it is, a seven. Uh, well, he blows on his fingers. He said he just didn't quite get enough action with his wrist and the fingers at the bottom of that ball as he takes some of the pressure off of Tita Semez as he looks to the side to check the scoreboard. If Pierce had struck there, the lead would have been just 12 pins. The match would have been up for grabs. Now, Tita Semez is in the driver's seat as June Pierce looks on. Okay. 155 through eight. Spare in the ninth. Chuck Pierce, look at the scoreboard. Solid 10 in the first frame. The only really errant shot the second frame. Strike, 10 pin, double. Another 10 pin, strike, 7 pin. He's had 8 out of 9 shots around the pocket. He still has a chance to win the match. What he must do is throw two strikes, one in the 10th and one in the 11th, get a good count. That would force Tita Semez to mark to win the match. If Pierce does not strike, Semez will go on to meet Jim Murdershaw. Fans here rooting for 42-year-old Chuck Pierce. See that he's left the 2, 4, and 10. Sliding by in a crucial situation. What he must do here, although the match is not really in his control anymore, is get the ball over in this area, slide the 2-pin over into the 10-pin. The best he can do is 192, though, even if he converts the spare. Nice appreciative round of applause for the man that lost to Anthony Tita Semez. Second win for Semez. He'll go against Jim Murdershaw next. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice. Its subtle masculine fragrance is the classic scent of the American male. In part two of our three-week mini-series for women, we're going to discuss the backup ball. Now, over the years, we've seen the backup ball is caused by the women having their thumb at 3 o'clock as they go through their swing, then rotating the fingers clockwise underneath the ball, causing a backup spin. We've also taught you that the way to correct this is to hold the thumb at 9 o'clock throughout the swing and allow the fingers to rotate counterclockwise around the ball. Now for you women that have had a lot of success over the years with the backup ball, maybe there's no use to change. We're going to show you how to improve that backup ball. First place, instead of standing on the right-hand side of the lane, move over to the left-hand side of the lane. Hold the backup ball in your normal position at 3 o'clock. Aim between the first and second arrows down the left side, allowing the backup ball, or now as we call it, a reverse hook, hook right into the one-two pocket, getting more strikes, and increasing your scoring power. Remember tip number two in our three-week mini-series for women. For you beginners, avoid that three o'clock position and the backup ball. But for you players that are accomplished with the backup ball, remember, move to the left side of the approach, roll the reverse hook down the left side of the lane, and you'll increase your strike power. 
What kind of man whistled the Old Spice tune? He is my daddy. My practically perfect husband. You can count on him. He's the captain of my ship. He's a friend. The Old Spice man, a man's man. Clean, refreshing Old Spice. It's the favorite scent of the American man, and he'll never change his tune. And I love him for it. Old Spice. Tomorrow, Louisville battles a tough squad from Memphis State. Then, on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Lloyd Hunnigan defends his welterweight crown against Johnny Bumpus live. Also, the San Diego track and field meet live. Plus more, all tomorrow on ABC Sports. And here in Venice, Florida, the name Samaz keeps going up. Our stair steps are bracketing, as you see, a 203 victory over Chuck Pierce of Dallas with four strikes. And a remarkable 52-year-old seems really ready now to accept the challenge of Jim Murdershaw, 33-year-old from Vista, California. And as Samez uh, average is up there at around 205, we see the size of our field this week was the standard 160. Look at the average, much lower this week. 196 as compared to about 209 the last couple weeks. Top 24, a mere 204. 200, as we said, to finish 53rd and pick up a $1,005. And here's some of the other finishers. National champion Chamberlain. Another lefty in there, Ron Bell, steady all week. Sam Macaron made a charge. Palmer Falgren, third time in the top 10 this year. There's a couple of lefties in 11th and 12th. Deadeye, 13th. The Eagle flying high. Mark Roth, a slim down Roth looking good. Little guy sneaks in there from Troy, Missouri in 16th. Ernie Schlegel, the president. Joe Berardi, solid again. Another Missourian, Leroy Bornhop. Harry Sullins, a champ up there. Pete Weber, Dave Ferraro, every week he's up there. Twitch Soper bowling very well this week. And my old buddy, my doubles partner, shortcut Sam Zurich, round out the top 24. Ah, yes, the Florida Bowling Proprietors Association opened in conjunction with the Bowlers Journal. Chris, the 219, the players averaged all week, just 199 today. And why that is, is very simply this. Is some weeks when you can get it going, it's just like a football team. You say, well, why are they shut out in the first half of a game? And all of a sudden, the momentum starts going, and they, and they score a lot of points. The same is true in professional bowling. These players can get hot. That average can jump right up. Here we go now with our third match of the afternoon, live from Galaxy Lanes in Venice, Florida. 33-year-old Jim Murdishaw to meet the winner of our first two games. TV pair average of 235. That was going into yes. today's championship round. So far, he's bowled two games, 208 and 203 for a 205 average. First shot. Strong starter is Tita Samez. Now, here's a look at a 5'6", 140-pounder, PBA member for eight years, looking for his first title. In fact, making it into the finals, Bo, probably kept Jim on tour. He was about ready to pack it in. A young stylist, and he's had his chance, and here he comes today. Let's see what he can do with it. Seven wouldn't drop. What a nice looking shot for his first shot in a championship round as you see the five step delivery or four and a half. He just shuttles that first step. Now notice how he is pronounced with that left arm out to the side, right arm in tight to his body. Just ideal position at the bottom of the swing. Here's a man, Chris, that once he could get loose out here, I think as you alluded to, he's a little bit under financial pressure. Mm -hmm. If he could get loose, he could win a lot of money. He's in good position. Only his second TV appearance in 84 in the Indianapolis Open. He finished fourth. His wife, Anita, and son travel with him. And we talked about ball speed. Jim Murdershaw, five feet, six inches tall at 145 pounds. As you look at his wife, Anita, checking the action, was rolling the ball just 15 miles an hour. That's about the slowest I've seen anybody roll the ball into the championship round since Billy Hardwick in the 60s, mm -hmm. who was so successful. Let's see how Murdershaw does today. Second frame. Just slid by, leaving the one, two, four, and sleeper eight. What? This is the frame that was the undoing of Chuck Pierce in the previous match in almost the same combination as you see the ball slide by the head pin, the one, two, four, eight. Murder Shaw hopefully can make this. This was the downfall of Pierce. He let this spare get by and open the door for Semez. The last 
moment covering that sleeper eight. Two spares for Murdershaw in his first match of the afternoon, the third for this man. Titus Amaz. Wide World of Sports next. And it's a great combination. World Cross Country skiing, Oberstdorf, Germany, and from Paris, Bo, pro skaters. Well, the skaters have always been one of your favorites, Chris, mm -hmm. and I learned from my former Superstars competition that those skaters are a lot, lot tougher and very much better conditioned than you would believe. Now, here's a guy in top shape. Titus Amaz leads by 14, third frame. <laughs> Three banger for Tita Samaz. Now it's Murdershaw, Jim Murdershaw, Vista, California. Two spares now shooting in the third frame. And his wife, Anita, in the green to the left of Tita Samaz. You see her right there? to himself. Earlier, we asked him what flaws he has in his style and how he guards against it. Well, I think that uh, a lot of extra practice time this week, and I worked on rolling the ball with a little more forward roll, and uh, the ball's gone a lot straighter, and I just feel that that's given me the best reaction so far this week. And he said he practiced about three hours a day before coming in here, and obviously his concentration is excellent, but he needs to put pressure on Tita Semez, who's just free-rolling, mowing over these opponents. And just coming up extremely high, leaving the 3-6 on the left lane. See the advantage of Tita Semez's power and speed. Jim Murdershaw just 16 miles an hour on that shot. He makes the adjustment for the 1-2-4-8, in the second frame, he moves to the right on the approach, and the ball does not set up or hold at the pocket, as we call it. C cuts a little high and leaves the 3-6. Murdershaw is going to have to conquer the left lane to compete with Semez. Marks with a spare there on that left side. We're in our third match. The winner to meet tournament leader Hugh Miller. We'll be back. When you want the rich, smooth, fresh taste of real draft beer in a bottle, ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. When the temperature drops below 30, remember the spark plug that's tested to start Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. When you want the rich, smooth, fresh taste of real draft beer in a can, ask for Miller Genuine Draft. The Miller with the black label. It's beer at its best. January 31st, Pete McCordick rolled a perfect game and won hundred grand. Now in the finals of the True Value Open, that same Pete's worth $200,000. It's ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour next Saturday. World tournament leader Hugh Miller, a lefty. Trying to be the, mm -hmm. sorry Chris, uh, sorry. trying to be the only, the second man this year to lead a tournament and win it. Kent Wagner did it at the showboat so far. Tournament leaders are one victory, five losses. Now here's Tita Semez up three strikes in a row. Fourth frame leads by 24. And then this, one, two, eight, ten. Obviously, direction and accuracy are 95% of any game, and Tita Semez did not have the proper accuracy on that as he leaves the one, two, eight, ten the washout as we call it on a pro bowlers tour he must get the ball to the left side of the head pin drive that one pin over into the ten pin let's see how he goes for it all right so now Semez's lead has been cut to eight pins his third match of the afternoon and he 
moves over to the left lane now. 84 through the fourth. Fifth frame. Murta Shaw with spare up in the fourth. High hit. 310. Something in Tita's style just came back to haunt him in the last two shots. The shot in the fourth frame, he should have just forgotten about. He just lost that ball, sent it to the right. Now in the fifth frame, he's going to try to keep the ball and help it up to the head pin. He leaves the 310 baby split. Has to go across lane, have the ball deflect from the three into the 10. Trouble. Disaster. Two. Make them back to back, open frames, and now he trails by three. A new leader in our semifinal match. Jim Murdershaw, fingertip grip. All the players are using polyurethane bowling balls this week. He's, this is the first man to have the lead against the Mez since Martin in the early going. And a 2-4, make it a 1-2-10 for Murdershaw. Murdershaw throws the ball a little bit too hard. He's been high light, high light, not even close. The ball slides by and leaves the split right there. He needs to slide that two pin over into the 10 pin. If he would convert it, it would have an even match as Tita Semez looks at the scoreboard. All right, gets the two pins. 82 through the fifth, trailing now by 11 over Tita Semez. I think one thing that Jim Murdershaw, who's very much a stylist and has an excellent style, needs to learn about his game is to get a little more ball speed on there on the ball. And how would you do it? Five feet, six inches tall, about the size of Marshall Holman. What you do is back up on the approach and let your legs generate the speed. Run up there a little bit faster, get a little more speed on the ball, he'd be a better player. There's a good shot. Watch this. And at that last moment, breaking to the head pin and leaving a 3-10. Well, 16 miles an hour, mm -hmm. hit the 55 foot mark down there on the lane, Murdershaw loses control of the ball. If he, if he would be about 18 miles an hour, such as Tita Semez has been in the early going, he would be able to make that ball set in the pocket. Here's the same split that Semez missed on the right. Let's see how Murdershaw handles it across lane. Beautifully done. After an open a conversion of the baby split. But the leader is Tita Semez in the navy blue shirt. Leading by 11, shooting in the sixth frame, following back-to-back -back open frames. Wow. Tita Semez picked up his ball speed there. Now watch this. His arm swing will go a little bit higher on this shot. He was at shoulder level when he started, about 18 miles an hour. Now he's at 19 on this particular shot between the second and third arrows. And he avoids the split. Gets himself an easy spare to shoot at. We're in our third match. The winner will meet left-hander Hugh Miller at Mercer Island, Washington. Four-time winner. Next week, Peoria, then Milwaukee. Semez using urethane ball fingertip grip. He has what we call finger inserts in the fingers. Those are those yellow little rings you see in the finger holes. Four pin again. What has happened? Very simply this. We've been on the air almost one hour. The players have been out there bowling under the, the heat of the Florida temperatures and the lanes are beginning to hook a little bit more. This favors Semez. He's throwing a little bit harder, keeping the ball in play. Murdershaw is going to have to make an adjustment to press Teeter Semez. This man leads by 10 pens over Murdershaw. Wendy's presents hot and juicy hamburgers. If you've ever had a dry, chewy hamburger, you're gonna love Wendy's hot and juicy hamburgers. Wendy's new big classic, soft Kaiser roll, juicy meat, juicy toppings, and lots of napkins. 
Enter the $50,000 Firestone Tournament of Champions sweepstakes and you could win a trip to the Tournament of Champions where you'll be paired with one of the five finalists. And if he wins, you win up to $25,000. Come to Firestone for your sweepstakes entry form, which is also an instant winner card. And everybody's a winner. You could win a free Master Care tune-up, alignment, shocks, brakes, discount coupons, and more. Enter the Tournament of Champions sweepstakes at Firestone today. You could win a trip to the tournament and up to $25,000 cash. Tomorrow, Louisville battles a tough squad from Memphis State. Then on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Lloyd Hunnigan defends his welterweight crown against Johnny Bumpus live. Also, the San Diego track and field meet live. Plus more, all tomorrow on ABC Sports. We have an even match. And a 10-pin for Samez, who held the lead. But while we're away, as uh, we're running behind our 90-minute time allotment, Murdashaw gets up after converting a 310 and doubles it, frame seven and eight. What a third game. Spare in the eighth for Samez. Tita Samez has stayed very close in every match. That's the key to being successful on the professional bowlers tour. The ability to shoot big scores when you're freewheeling, but to keep the pressure on your opponents. Samez very conscious of not defeating himself. Obviously, there's the possibility of a tie. Remember, Samez won the first match by a mere pin over Steve Martin. He trails by one pin in this match. Ninth frame. What a foundation for the 52-year-old. The 33-year-old, Murdashaw, is up with a double working, shooting in the ninth. A seesaw match. At one time, Murdashaw was trailing by 24 pins. He cut the lead down, the deficit down to eight. Then at one time, he had a 10-pin lead. Now he leads by one, can extend to 11. Ninth frame. And a 10. Well, that was the one to take the, a commanding lead. If he converts the spare, it is an even match going into the 10th frame. Murdershaw needs this strike to take an 11-pin lead. The ball hits the 1-3. Doesn't drive hard enough to 6 into the 10. A spare here, both players would be even through 9 frames. Advantage to Tita Semez because he has a strike working. This is the man that finished second in a field of 160. Jim Murdashaw, Vista, California, looking for his first win. But it'll be his biggest payday by far, regardless of what happens. The scoreboard tells the story. As Bill Murdashaw looks on, he's aware of his son's predicament. We have not had a tie match all year long. It could happen right here. And Anita, his wife, and his pop, looking at that overhead score screen. Both players going at a 191 pace. There it is on the scoreboard. Murdershaw could take a 10-pin lead with another strike, but he cannot shut out Tita Semez. Tita still has a possible 211. The best Murdershaw can do is 201. Big shot right here. Two five. And oh, how important this spare is. He doesn't quite get the ball up to the pocket. Needs this strike. Knocks out the four pin, leaves the two five. With a conversion right here, he would finish with a 191 game. So important. That would force Tita Semez to either strike on the first ball or strike on the second ball for a victory or a tie. One night he won for Murdershaw of Vista, California. Strike up in the ninth, and here is Tita Semez. Won his first match by a pin, a 208 to 207 over Steve Martin, then over Chuck Pierce, 203 to 181. And you saw the graphic 
most of you. Said needs a strike right now. Two five. The possibilities for Tita Semez, the best he can do in this match is tie and go into sudden death in regulation. Oh, the speed on that was 19. Amped up, the adrenaline flowing. Tita wanted to make sure, threw it a little bit harder. Left the 2-5. He needs a spare and a strike to tie the match. Face of a tie, a two-frame roll-off. Pressure, pressure. Well, Tita answered the call in the first match when he threw two clutch strikes to beat Steve Martin. Now, he must strike to put this match into extra frames. If he throws a strike, Murder Shaw will get up on the left lane and bowl what we call the ninth and tenth frames. Here it is. Big loft out and again, the 3-10. A 2-10 victory by Jim Murdershaw over Tita Semez. It'll be Murdershaw against Hugh Miller. I'm 80 years old, and I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults are coming forward to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid cereal. I eat them, I love them, and I don't care who knows. With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, they have a taste adults can love every bit as much as kids. Go ahead, Shirley, you can do it. I love them, thank you. <laughs> what more can you say? Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great! This is your cousin, Samantha. Hi, Samantha. Hi. I've never ridden in a What are you doing? Starting the revolution. Share the victory. The incredible conclusion of America. won the Super Bowl. What are you doing next? I'm going to go to Disney World. Looking good. Bring your side down. Just if great there. deals and factory air at no charge on select golfs and Jettas appeal to you, go to your Volkswagen dealer. That's right, folks. It's the Volkswagen Wake-a-thon, and I'm not going to sleep, not a wink, until I make a deal on every car in this lot. So come on down. Remember, as long as I'm awake, the deals are on, okay? Three, two, one. <laughs> hey, I'm kidding you. Start the clock. We're dealing. Ronnie's up, and the deals are on at your Volkswagen dealer. Watch Jim Morris on 27 News at 6. While we have a chance, we thought we'd like to share a moment of bowling interest with all of you. In balloting conducted among members of the Bowling Writers Association of America, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. of Stockton, California, and Lisa Wagner of Palmetto, Florida, were voted Seagram's Cooler Man and Woman Bowlers of the Year for 1986. Here are Walter and Lisa receiving handsome trophies and checks for $5,000 each from Mark Bozzini, product manager for the Seagram's Wine Company for their outstanding accomplishments last year. We congratulate them both. And now an answer to Bo's question. What colleges provide scholarships and or financial aid for bowlers? Nelson? Hey, and Chris, after checking with the American Bowling Congress, there were a number of uh, colleges, and Barbara Peltz, who heads up that division, the college division, asked us to put this address up. They'll handle all communications, and there are many spots available. And if you have any questions to ask me, feel free to... Post Office Box 951, Radio Station, New York, 10019, as we're ready for the championship match. And our tournament leader, left-hander Hugh Miller, attended Bellevue uh, College in Seattle area as the two now shake hands, battling for the $23,000 first prize, $12,000 for second. Here's a man that upset Anthony Tita Semez in Semez's third match. 
by a score of 191 to 189. Who has the advantage, Chris? The man mm. coming on who's never been there, Jim Muttershaw, or the proven champion, Miller? Let's see. A break leaving the 10 on the left lane. Jim Murdershaw, who needs a victory to qualify for the third jewel in bowling's triple crown, the Firestone, the final tournament of this season, would knock out Bobby Jacks from the field of 52 players, but he needs a victory. Hugh Miller already assured of a spot in the Firestone. Now we get a look at the only left-hander in our field of five finalists. There were 18 lefties that started, four made the top 24, and here is our tournament leader. 30 years old, Mercer Island, Washington, 5'11", 180 pounds. Smooth delivery, but a 3'5". One of the reasons Hugh Miller has been so dominant as you look at his profile, a five-step delivery, is his methodical style and his ability to mark and convert frames. As you see him low at the foul line, nice smooth delivery. Not a straight ball, not the big hook, good concentration. And Chris, until the 1986 True Value Open last year, Hugh Miller had never had an open frame in the championship round. Winner of four, including two. Time Quaker State Open champion in 1980 and 84. His first six times in a championship round, Hugh Miller emerged a victor. He had never had an open frame until he left the 1379, losing to Walter Ray Williams. Now let's see the style here of Hugh Miller as he uses a fingertip grip, tucks that baby finger under there to tighten it up, extends the index finger. Here he goes. There's the man that had the high game in the tournament at 299. His first strike in this final. No 300 games this week. Obviously the 299 Miller had as he was running away with this tournament. Well, look at the grip of Murder Shaw as he tucks his baby finger, extends that index finger for balance. Good concentration. After two frames and a match for 23,000 to the winner. Okay, following up on our ball speed, the average winning speed that I've seen over the years is 18 miles an hour. That's exactly what Hugh Miller, our tournament leader, rolled his first two frames at that speed. Jim Murdershaw, who was struggling against Semez in the early going, was at 15 and 16. He picked up the 17 at the end of the match. He threw that last shot at 17 miles an hour. If he can maintain that speed, He'll give Hugh Miller all he can handle. All right. Big double. Jim Murdershaw with wife Anita and his dad Jim on the left talking now with his daughter-in-law. Murdershaw, who has never seen the winner's circle. Four times Hugh Miller has been there. He's good running away with the tournament. He can throw strikes, and he's very tough in the clutch. Eight and two in television games. Wow, we leaving the seven. Hugh Miller leaves the first frame. He leaves the three five. He makes the adjustment here, but he over adjusts. He moves too far to the left to try to get more angle of attack on the one two pocket. Crosses over. Leaves a very simple spare to convert the seven pin. He would trail by ten pins. We asked Miller how he prepared for this tournament. Well, this week down here in Florida with the nice weather, I think uh, I was able to get outside and do a little jogging. And I'm a pretty avid runner, but some weeks out here, uh, it's hard to get outside and do that. And I think by going out and running this week, it gave me a little edge. In fact, I was out there this morning uh, running, tuning up for the show. Hmm. All right, dedication. Very true. He said he ro ran four miles this morning. Right now, he has seven frames left in order to be in the victory circle. Let's see what happens. Oh! Oh! Cole 
cross lane help for Hugh Miller. Watch. Watch the action of the head pin. The ball impacts the head pin. Now, don't lose it. There it goes in the right-hand channel. Here it comes. It's rolling. It's rolling. How's your luck? Boom. All right. A head pin can be important for Hugh Miller in particular today. We're in our final match. More of it following this. Why do 32 million Americans protect their engines with Quaker State motor oil? Because they're car-carrying people who want only the best for their engines. Here, Quaker State quality stands up to the constant pounding heat and friction that breaks down motor oil. You can see Quaker State quality, the pure protection that comes from our state-of-the-art formula that can't be beat. I need a carpet deodorizer that destroys odors without heavy perfume. So I use Arm & Hammer carpet deodorizer. Other products cover up odors. Arm & Hammer penetrates to absorb and destroy odors. It smells clean and fresh without heavy perfume. Mm, all this great food. It's for the party. And a fresh box of Arm & Hammer baking soda keeps everything fresh. Another box in the freezer? Keeps ice cream from tasting funny. And the calendar reminds us to change every three months. Isn't it time for a fresh box? Jim Murdershaw with the double up has a 10 pin lead, can increase it to 20 as he shoots in the fourth frame of our final match. 23,000 the winner, 12,000 for second. A 10. Murdershaw keeping the ball in play. The first match, he was all over the place for seven frames, got his act together at the end of the match, and just nipped Tita Semez at the wire. So far, he has kept every ball around the pocket, a 10-pin in the first frame. As you look at Bill Morris, the president of the Tampa Bowling Proprietors Association, and one of the close friends of the man who hosted this tournament, Rafi Carrion, the president of Galaxy Bowling Centers, four of them in the Florida area. fourth for Jim Murdershaw, who defeated Tito Samaz in the previous match, 191 to 189, as we look at Rafi Carrion, proprietor here, good guy. Owns four bowling centers, and I had the good fortune of winning one of his tournaments in 1979 up in the Sarasota area. He's just as nice a guy as he seemed right there on camera. Now back to some guys who got to play it tough. A lot of money at stake for Murdershaw, a trip to the Firestone. He's never been in the winner's circle. Leads by nine pins. Good job. Cheering, jumping at the line for that one to hit the pocket and get them all, which he did. What a dandy shot as he just rips the five out. When you see a player roll a shot like that, you know he's playing the right angle and he's loose. That's the important thing. Don't be apprehensive. Now, let's see what Miller can do. This is the lane that's given him trouble. He was light in the first frame, high in the third. He must make the adjustment to stay in the match. A seven pin, and we replay it. Once again, the ball doesn't quite finish all the way into the pocket. You saw the ball slide behind the seven pin. He's hoping, give me a little break to get this match even. Kind of a wry look on his face, Chris. Mm-hmm. All right. For Hugh Miller, our tournament leader, is spare in the fifth. Talk about domination today. The president of the Professional Bowlers Association led the first round, then it was all Miller. 18 games qualifying, top 24 went at it, bowled an additional 24 games of match play. We've already had three matches so far in the championship round. We're down to just two players. Hugh Miller, the tournament leader, and Jim Murdershaw trying to win his first title. Six frame. Wanted that win because Murdershaw will have a strike up in the fifth frame, shooting in the sixth. The wall shot, hits it light, lets that head pin do the work, takes out the five, six, and a 10. As Hugh Miller hangs tough, he's been close on every shot. A golden opportunity for the functional game of Jim Murdershaw. He can extend his lead 
by 10 more pins to 19 with a strike here in the sixth. Tough competitor, which he uh, did show against Samez. He may be diminutive in stature, but when he has that bowling ball in his hand and an opportunity, Chris, he seems very, very tough. He's really handling himself very well as his father, Bill, looks on, his wife on the right there. They know the situation. He can take a commanding lead with a strike here in the seventh. loves it and he leads by 29 over the tournament later more after this man skiing sure is fun you run into lots of nice people out there yeah we ran into quirky yesterday well, that's for sure and afterwards there's nothing like a warm fire oh, I'll see. and a cold nor light light really tastes great and it's less filling and us hot doggers don't like to get filled up speaking of hot dogs where's you girl you Great seats, hey, buddy? Ah, ah, hey, where are all the guys? They're missing all the fun. For great taste, there's only one light beer, Miller Lite. When the temperature drops below 30, remember the spark plug that's tested to start below zero. Champion, we go to ridiculous extremes to test the reliability of our spark plugs. In the beginning of recorded history, man had an idea called caravan. Slow and plodding, but right for its time. Some years later, man had a better idea. Dodge Caravan. Efficient, versatile, and perfect for its time. It has a newly available V6 for more power. And with front-wheel drive and a 770 protection plan, Dodge Caravan has no equal in the civilized world. Dodge, setting new standards of performance. Former World and Olympic champions Scott Hamilton, Robin Cousins, and more. The World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. Wide World next here on ABC and next in professional bowling live from Galaxy Lanes in Venice, Florida. Hamlet here that will celebrate its centennial next year. Hugh Miller, Mercer Allen, Washington. Hugh Miller trailing by 29 pins in a critical situation here. Seventh frame has a strike working. Man that dominated and he has left the three, five, six. Obviously a different lane condition on the right side and the left side. We've seen the four right-handers, the ability to conquer the left-hand lane has been what has made Murdershaw so successful today. Obviously, Q Miller has struck on the left-hand lane, lane 31 every time, has struggled on the right-hand lane, but the match is not over. This man is hanging tough. The lanes do not yield big scores, so hang in there. And a good spare for Hugh Miller. Wide World follows us here on ABC from Paris, the professional figure skating world challenge and the companion feature from Oberstdorf, Germany. It'll be world cross-country skiing. The winter sports, another prelude to our coverage of the Calgary Olympic Games in 1988, a year from now. Hugh Miller, eighth frame, trails by 29. All right, remember Hugh Miller, because he finished higher than Murdershaw in the tournament, has the choice of which lane to finish on. If you look at the scoreboard, Miller will finish on the lane he struck every time. So throw a strike there in the ninth frame for him. He has a possible 230. If he can strike out in the tenth on his good lane, Murdershaw going at a 229 pace. It's up for grabs. It's a rebagger going. The two pin. Sent it wide. That's the best place to be if you're going to miss. You don't want to go through the heart, get a split. It not only pumps up your opponent, but is very debilitating to your score. So Murdershaw ends up with an easy spare, the two pin. 
He'll go straight at it right over the third arrow and maintain a 28 pin lead as we go into the final two frames of the far to open. Okay, we're in our final match. And when it's all over here in Venice, Florida, we will go to ABC's Wide World of Sports. I mentioned professional figure skating and world cross-country skiing. Uh, added uh, feature, special report on manager Dick Hauser, Kansas City. He is coming back. What a courageous fighter he's always been. The last shot by Murder Shaw at that spare, just 14 miles an hour. He's becoming tentative as it's getting close to the final two frames. Seven pin on the left lane. Only manages 15 miles an hour on it. He's starting to aim the shot. He ha he's in the driver's seat, leads by 27 pins. That beautiful arm swing that he has is really redeeming that lack of ball speed. He's not letting it run high on him. Must convert the spare, so don't give anything away. Look at that beautifully straight swing. Okay. It's been a great event all week here. Capacity crowds. We salute the Florida bowling proprietors and, and the oldest sports magazine, monthly magazine in existence, the Bowlers Journal and Mort Luby, the publisher, the third of the Lubies that have published it starting in 1913. That's vintage. Been a few years. Miller needs a shot. Biggest shot of the tournament. A 2-4. Well, he needs a miracle now. He needed that strike to put pressure on Murdershaw for Hugh Miller, our tournament leader. He must convert this spear and get three strikes to have any chance. He would still need a miracle to overtake this man in the 10th frame. be frustrating though as a tournament leader as you pointed out earlier one victory by a tournament leader in six coming into galaxy lanes here and he dominated so and then having struggling here to cop the first prize trying to well i think some of that chris is uh, a, a testing to the great ability of all the other players once they get in a groove they're really tough to beat and those trying for their first victory ever on the national tour it's unbelievable, the true grit that they have. Well, Murder Shaw, with his functional style, bowled a very cerebral game. He did not beat himself. He's kept the ball in play. It's just a formality to finish it. He just needs to go up and throw one ball, and the tournament will be over. Keep it on the lane, Jimmy, and I'll see you at the Firestone in April. Hugh Miller, undoubtedly disappointed. He'll be back. He's a great winner. He did not beat himself. Murder Shaw took this title. And here's your new champion, Chris. Okay, his first victory ever for Jim Murdershaw. And I can't tell you what the 23,000 will mean to Jim, his wife, Anita, and his son. The Professional Bowlers Tour is brought to you by Wendy's, home of hot and juicy hamburgers. By Champion Spark Plug Company. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft smoothness. It's beer at its best. All right, there you see the man, Jim Murdershaw, who has to finish his game. He'll be in the 220s, whereas his opponent, the tournament leader, Hugh Miller, shot 199. The trophy and the check will be presented by Mark Galuby of Bowler's Journal and Bill Morris of the Bowling Proprieties. Coming up next, ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Professional Figure Skating World Challenge of Champions, World Olympic Champions, Gracie Ice says Scott Hamilton and Robin Cousins lead the men, Hamill and Sumners lead the women's field. Top prize of 40,000 plus world cross-country skiing and a special report with manager Dick Hauser of Kansas City. So, this has been a presentation of ABC Sports once again. The winner for the first time at 23,000, 
It is Jim Murdershaw, 226 to Hugh Miller's 199. So long from Venice, Florida.